We have seen so far how to answer Boolean queries involving AND, OR, and NOT operations by using our inverted index. A query like Brutus and Caesar and not Calpurnia can be answered by sequentially by sequentially answering Brutus and Caesar first then calculating not Calpurnia and then taking the result of Brutus and Caesar and not Calpurnia and anding them together. So the postings list that will result by answering Brutus and Caesar which is basically the answer list of doing this operation will get intersected with the answer list that is generated by doing not Calpurnia. So this way any arbitrary boolean expression involving terms can be answered by sequentially breaking them down into one or two operations at a time. We will now look at a high level overview of the pipeline that is used to construct an inverted index in the first place. We will look at steps within this pipeline in more detail in future videos. For now we are just going to look at it from a high level, from a 30,000 feet perspective. So the first thing that needs to be done is to gather or collect the documents that need to be indexed. To gather the documents over which the index needs to be built. And in the context of web search, this is going to be done by crawling and fetching all the documents that will go into the web index. This is a sample document a trivial document in fact which just has three terms friends comma romans comma countrymen now every document in this collection or corpus will be passed through a tokenizer the tokenizer will split the document into a stream of tokens for example, this document, Friends, Romans and Countrymen, is split into these three tokens, Friends, Romans and Countrymen. You can see that the tokenizer has done a few additional things besides just splitting the document along white spaces. It has also remove these punctuation marks so the commas and the full stop has dis have disappeared and the white spaces across which this split was performed are also absent so we just have these three tokens generated from this document minus white spaces minus punctuation marks Now this stream of tokens that's generated by ingesting this document is going to further be passed through a linguistic module. The output of the linguistic module is going to be a stream of the same tokens but modified in some way. Each of these tokens will be massaged in some way. In this particular example, you can see that the word friends has become friend. So what has happened is that the, sing the, the, the plural form of the word has been converted into the singular form. And this is called depluralization, which has been done by this linguistic module. Another thing that has happened is the uppercase here has become converted into 
the lower case form. So case folding has also been done. Conversion of upper case to lower case and the conversion of plural forms of the tokens into the singular form. So at this stage, the output of the linguistic module is going to be a stream of normalized tokens. This stream of normalized tokens is going to be input to the indexer, which is going to take that stream and generate the final inverted index that we saw earlier as its output. To be a little more specific, imagine that we are not just inputting these normalized tokens one by one to the indexer, but we are also coupling these normalized tokens with the associated doc IDs of the documents from which they come. So for example, the first document that goes through this pipeline could get a doc ID of 1. The second document that goes through this pipeline could get a doc ID of 2 and so on. So when document 1 is passed through the tokenizer, the output of the tokenizer will be friends comma 1. So this is the token itself and this is the doc ID. Romans comma 1 and countrymen comma 1. We are also keeping track of the doc IDs from where these tokens are coming. Similarly, the output of the linguistic module will be friend comma one, Roman comma one, and countryman comma one. These are the normalized tokens with the associated doc IDs that are input to the indexer. Now we are going to look at what the tokenizer and the linguistic module do in future videos. As of now, we will just look at the indexer in slightly more detail. What exactly does the indexer do in order to convert this input into the final output, which is the inverted index itself? We are going to take only a a simple indexer into account right now that is we are going to assume that the entire index can finally fit into main memory so whatever operations the indexer needs to do on these normalized tokens are all going to happen in main memory that's what we'll assume right now later on we'll see that this stream of normalized tokens could be so large that they not only don't fit into main memory but they also may not fit onto the hard disk or the hard drive of a single machine. We may have to actually split the entire stream uh, across multiple machines within a cluster. That is, we may have to distribute the computation of the uh, final index across several machines. But to start with, we'll just consider an indexer that's running on one machine and uh, whose data can be completely accommodated into main memory. So let's look at what the indexer needs to do in such a circumstance. So it's taking in a sequence of modified token comma doc ID pairs and here's a toy example where we have two documents in the corpus and after both these documents have gone through the linguistic module, the output of the linguistic module is this particular stream of normalized tokens. So for example, this i remains an i at the end, but it's associated with the, the doc id one because it's coming from the first document. This did remains as it is and associated with doc ID 1. In fact, probably the only kind of normalization that's happening over here is this conversion of 
the uppercase uh, as in words like Caesar and Capitol into the lowercase forms and maybe the removal of these these punctuation marks like full stop and semicolon now what you may notice over here is that if you just look at this stream from from top to bottom because this is the order in which the stream would be generated they are sorted according to their doc IDs and that's not surprising because by definition the very first doc ID that will be generated is one because the, f the very first document that will be processed will get a doc ID of one so it's natural that the output of the linguistic module is going to be a stream of normalized tokens sorted in increasing order of doc ID starting from one the core job of the indexer is to sort these uh, uh, normalized tokens associated with their doc IDs according to the value of the terms in lexicographic order so instead of being sorted according to doc IDs we are now going to sort this entire stream according to the terms and in cases where we have multiple occurrences of the same term we will then look at the doc ID and sort the tuples in accordance with the doc IDs for the same term so for example Caesar appears three times in this stream and if we sort these three tuples Caesar comma one Caesar comma two Caesar comma two we're going to get we're going to get them in this particular order so we're going to have smaller doc IDs appear before larger doc IDs for the same term and notice that we we're going to get some duplicates also because if Caesar appears twice in the second document there are going to be two tuples two identical tuples generated uh, by the tokenizer but we want the overall stream to be sorted according to term first and secondarily according to doc ID so this is the primary key as far as sorting these tuples is concerned and this is the secondary key we're going to secondarily sort according to the doc IDs assuming that the terms are the same so you can see that these terms are in lexicographic order starting from A and going down in lexicographic or alphabetic order now since this is happening in main memory the indexer could use any of the sorting algorithms that you may have studied in a data structures or algorithms course now once we have sorted these tuples in accordance with primarily terms and secondarily doc IDs we are next going to remove all duplicates so for example these two tuples will be merged into a single tuple called Caesar comma 2 after that we will do a single pass through the resulting stream from top to bottom and build the postings list for each term so note that all the tuples for a particular term are bunched up together and moreover the terms themselves are appearing in, a, in alphabetic or lexicographic order so we can take the first term look at all the tuples for it and because the tuples are going to be sorted in increasing order of doc IDs we can keep generating or we can keep building incrementally the postings list for this term during this single pass so in this case this term is associated only with doc ID 2 and so we'll just create a single node with the value 2 in the postings list for the word ambitious if we come to 
a term like Caesar because there will be two tuples here Caesar comma 1 and Caesar comma 2 assuming that the duplicates have been removed. When we look at Caesar we will first create a node with value 1 and then we'll look at the next tuple which has a value of 2 and we'll insert 2 at the end of this list that we would have already created with just the element 1. And so in this case the postings list will have a length of 2 and in the same way we'll keep doing this even when there are more documents and once we have processed this whole stream we would have created the postings list for all the terms in it. One other thing that's happening here uh, in the indexing step is that some frequency information is being added to each term. So what kind of frequency information is this? The document frequency often abbreviated as DF is the number of documents in which the term appears. So let's call the term as T. The document frequency or DF of a term T is the number of documents in which T appears. Another way to put it is, it's the length of the postings list for T. So the length of the postings list for ambitious is just 1. And so we store a value of 1 alongside this term ambitious and this one is the document frequency of the word ambitious. You can see that all postings list with a length of 2 here are going to cause a document frequency of 2 to appear alongside their respective terms and all the other terms have a document frequency of 1. Now you may ask why do we need to add this document frequency and store it alongside every term? So the document's frequency is stored along with the terms in the dictionary. It's not stored in the postings list itself, it's stored in the dictionary. The utility of this field, the document frequency field, will be apparent in the next video. For now, I just wanted to point out that this is something we are going to need shortly. And it's something that we can easily calculate during this single pass through this sorted list of normalized tokens after the duplicates have been removed. So this in brief is how the indexer is going to take the input stream of normalized tokens associated with their doc IDs and build a, an inverted index out of it with a dictionary portion containing the document frequency alongside the terms and a postings list portion.